What's up, everyone? Welcome to the qualifier of the half a million dollar tournament. I've made six episodes practicing for this, and now it is time. I do have to admit, I'm definitely feeling nervous. I can feel my hands are cold, which is usually happens when I'm nervous. But anyway, I did do a warm up. Normally, I don't do a warm up, but here it seemed appropriate. I, as you can see, I got rank 16 Grandmaster. And I did end up achieving my goal of 6.2k. In the warm-up just now, I beat a 6.3k Protoss player twice. And here, Marine, a 6.8k Terran once. And now I'm feeling ready. Nervous, but ready. Let's begin. All right, so the first opponent is going to be Intra. Now, this is pretty much going to be a little bit of an extra warm-up. Our opponent is a Diamond Protoss. If I, if I can't beat him, then... You know, I definitely was never going to win the qualifier. So this is going to be an extension of my warm-up, which is great. Now, I do have some, e well, bad or good news, depending on your point of view. Because I think some of you thought I was going to get, you know, through these qualifiers easily. That was never going to happen. Uh, but if you're hoping for some fireworks, then I think this qualifier is going to be the right thing for you. Because something I didn't think about is that this is not a qualifier for just Europeans. It is just played on the European server. In other words, there are seven top Koreans signed up and a bunch of really good players. I think like the the top four from the Americas region I saw. So yeah, we're definitely in for a little bit of trouble here. But I mean, as far as I can get, I'm going to be quite happy. Our ultimate goal, in case you guys forgot how the system worked, is if you get top eight in this tournament you go to the final qualifier which is just top 16 and of that seven players go to the big grand finale in katowice in poland so my big goal was to qualify for the second qualifier basically so i have to get top eight here out of about 100 players i already peeped at the bracket a little bit uh, and if we win this our next opponent is going to be special who is a very strong active pro terran player so uh you know that's gonna be our first big challenge honestly Already a bigger challenge than I would have hoped for so early in the tournament, but it is what it is. I'm just going to be trying my best. And well, like I said, I did just beat Hero Marine, who these days is considered to be a decent bit stronger than special. So, you know, maybe there's a little bit of chance there. I, they are completely different players, by the way, so he doesn't really have to say a whole lot. I do have to say, in my last practice session, which was after the last practice video i uploaded right not to confuse them i played about five six games and they were pretty much the opposite of all the practice videos so what happened in the practice videos is that very often i had very good strategies but the mechanics were lacking and then in the last practice session that was kind of the opposite my strategy was never working out but my macro was suddenly really good again so if we somehow can bring those two together you know today that would be freaking perfect if i can get my macro from the last session and the strategy from the practice videos i think you know we're actually going to have a pretty decent shot here um you know i, I do have to say there are even more good players signed up than I thought there would be. Like, I, at some point, I realized, like, oh, the Koreans can play as well. So all the Koreans who haven't made it in the Korean qualifier are going to play here now. Probably going to be, like, three or four. But I think in the top 12 of this qualifier, I think there's, like, one or two Europeans. So that should show you how many people came over from the other regions, right? So that is definitely a little scary. Now, what am I going to do here against this Protoss is... I mean, we're not being streamed here. This is just me casting it for my own channel, of course. So I can basically do my normal builds that I would do without being afraid that someone is going to spy on them and use it against me later, right? The information. So uh, I don't necessarily have to be scared about that. Now, obviously, I do have my videos, right, that people can watch. I think a couple of you have commented it, like, isn't this just giving away your strategy? Well, I guess in some way, but... It is a whole different beast to look up someone's YouTube channel and, you know, there's six of these videos, right, where I'm practicing. Look through six videos and then somehow decipher what is the strategy I'm going to do against them. Like, most people are not really going to go through that effort. And even if they did, they'd probably be really tired by the end of it, you know, because of going through so many videos. It's If it's like a live stream, that is a completely different story. Now, I think with this attack, I have two purposes. First of all is to kill probes and the second one is to get the scout. So I'm going to target the probes through the stalker fire uh, and then i'm gonna go into the main base to see what i can do besides that i'm gonna go for ravens as well now the battery in the main is late guys that's really good news for us i mean we're gonna do so much freaking damage here this is already looking pretty brutal for my opponent I do need to make sure that i actually get tanks going probably kill one more pro barely didn't get it all right but that is still more than enough damage if I get the damage against anyone, I'm really, really happy with it. Now, we do still have to defend against the... Well, it's only three gates. I also didn't see a robo, though technically it could be proxy. 
gonna start walling off my base but yeah like i said i'm mostly gonna be using this as a warm-up i mean if i lose a game i will definitely go full try hard for uh you know the other games to make sure i win the best of three it, it, they are they are all best of threes by the way just so you guys know uh which means the first to two points wins uh but more than likely we are going to be able to close this one out at some point and i can just you know go through the motions of my build and then when we play against another protoss i am gonna be ready for it now, I did struggle a little bit with some things with this build. I really like the flow of it. The biggest problem for me is that the third barracks is very late. So if I don't do early damage, then all of a sudden, you know, there are some doubts about how efficient this build is going to be. Because if I'm going to have to hit a follow-up, like, let's say, plus one timing from the engineering bay, I, I don't think I'm really going to have that many units ready for it. He's going to probably kill that... No, barely not, actually, I think, right? Yeah, it's barely going to stay alive. Okay, that's perfect. I, I, I honestly, I, I underreacted a little bit there, but it worked out perfectly for me. So that is, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. Now I'm going to be harassing with my Ravens. Has definitely been one of my favorite moves, I have to say. I, I've even been cons uh, considering just not getting Interference Matrix, like the upgrade, because I really just spend most of the energy on turrets anyway. But then I, I guess you'll see the one time I do need the Interference Matrix, I, I won't have it. So maybe I should just, you know, keep on getting it every single time. Now, he does have one... Yeah, he has one battery in the main. Oh, there's a Dark Shrine there. Okay, well, all my... Should I bring it back? Uh, I sh probably should, right? Yeah, I mean, I just like doing damage, guys. I like outplaying my opponent and getting some damage done. I mean, I have the wall over there. My opponent surely is going to have a Warp Prism, so he'll be able to attack in the main. I think it's going to be completely fine even without one of those, though. That looks like a bunch of Stalkers to me on the minimap there. I'm going to go up to 50 probes, try to get my build to be as clean as possible here. Uh, but I, I think you guys can probably see what I meant, right? Like it's... Or maybe you think I have an amazing amount of units. It's also possible. But no, for me, I mean, 90 supply here. It's it's really not the worst, but it's also a relatively small army, I think. But I, I guess I do play five units from a double gas, a lot of Reaper Heli in aggression, and also make two Ravens, plus the Interference Matrix, which basically gives me like a lot of tools to either do damage or just defend against stuff. Because the Ravens are supposed to be good against DTs, but not if you send them out on the map like this. Let's see. Okay, so he has one battery. I could I could target a battery, or I could kill a couple probes, I think. Let's see. Oh, that's actually not that efficient. I think maybe I should be going for the battery next time. Wait, did I? I thought I made a command center for some reason. Um, yeah, I, I always wondered if it would be better to target, like, three, four probes. But I... What did I kill there? Two probes, maybe? Like, barely anything for two turrets, right? So I guess the next time I'll probably just target the battery. And now we're going to be hitting my first strong follow-up push. For which I would really like to have a raven. So maybe I'll try to sneak this one back around. Get my extra set of barracks. Yeah, you, you know what? I, I feel like the build is a little better in the follow-up than I gave it credit for. Like, I don't have, you know, the absolutely pulverizing 145 supply or so that some Terrans will have at 730. But if you consider that I'm very safe, if you consider that I get a lot of scouting, that I have the potential to do damage, yeah, it's really not as bad as I thought, you know? So let's see. I mean, he has charge loss. Normally, I would be playing safe, but I just can't imagine that after that early game that he has anywhere near the amount of units required to... Uh, be able to do anything here. I am going to close these depots because I feel like he might be out on the map here. I'm just going to go in, focus that pylon because it is a little bit of an artosis pylon at the front. going to stim through. He has a lot of stalkers, but stalkers can't really blink in exactly because <laughs> that's what happens if you blink in against three tanks, guys. They just get absolutely pulverized. And that is going to be the first game of the tournament in the books, which is, you know, it was about as comfortable as I expected it to be. And it, it is nice that it went so comfortable. I, I was kind of thinking in the warm-up game I played, I, I didn't say before, but I played that warm-up game against Hero Marine, right? That game went on for 26 minutes, and I kind of felt like maybe I should have left a little earlier to not tire myself out. But now having like a more relaxed warm-up game like this, where I can just execute my build, get a good feel for it for the rest of the tournament, kill him with the first timing attack, that's perfect. Let's not waste too much time. Let's go for game number two. All right, game number two is going to be an Oceanborn here. I think I'm going to go for a Proxy Rax. Uh, it's not exactly the safest build ever, but... Like I said, I do want to get in the rhythm of my normal builds, right? And I think if I meet a good Protoss later on, I will definitely... Or a better Protoss, I should say, to not be mean to intra here. Um, I should definitely be, you know, practicing a little more cheeky builds. You know, like biggest, biggest variety always gives you the biggest chance. Well... Okay, that's not always true. I, I, I guess it, it kind of depends on the sample size. I would say if you play a lot of tournaments and then you have a big variety, then it's definitely going to help you. In one best of three, 
sometimes it's just better to just do the same stuff over and over. Like, I, I feel like a pretty common uh, theme you would see for a best of three is you do build one in game number one, right? Let's say it's a macro build. You play a macro build game number one. The second game, you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to hit him with the one, two punch and mess him up. So in, build, in game two, you do build number two, which is a cheesy build. Then... When that build horribly fails, you will very likely go back to build number one, right? Uh, similar, if you play a best of five or best of seven or even longer, right? Sometimes I, I think people have played best of 69s before. Not even kidding when I say that. People have, yeah, I don't know why they would go through the torture of playing that, but they have. Uh, you're going to get a feel of whether your opponent responds better, not even to a specific build, but better to cheesy play or macro play. Like you can pretty quickly realize whether you're you're playing a bit better than your opponent in the macro games or a bit worse, for example. Like it's it's sometimes a little bit hard to differentiate because you can totally lose games where you played better, um, especially in StarCraft where luck is always going to be a bit of a factor. Like if you just have uh, a horrible build against you, right, a build that you can't really beat with your build. Obviously, there you know you do have to take a little bit of risk to be in that bad of a spot, but it's definitely possible that you get a build situation so bad that you outplay your opponent by two levels and still lose, right? And I'm mostly talking about like macro, micro mechanics because if you take the build into account, uh, the better player is still going to win. But, you know, I, I feel like more more often than not, micro mechanics, macro, those are more, you know, relevant to decide the, the better player than uh, you just what someone decided to do as his build order. Uh, so anyway, what I'm trying to say... Is if your opponent's really bad against macro, you just play macro against him. And if he's not, you play cheesy against him. So uh, that's why I want to try both. Now, I'm really going to get a couple of Reapers here. My, my opponent's going to go for a double uh, gate response, which is quite unusual. Uh, this is actually a tip I can give to, you know, players not playing at the pro level or probably uh, maybe even not pro, maybe even Grandmaster level is that... This is just clearly overreacting what he's doing, right? Like, it is just an innocent proxy reaper. I mean, I could have already expanded. I think it's even fortunate for him that I really want to try this build because I could have expanded. I would be way ahead. Because against a proxy reaper, you can you can just expand right away. And, and that's it, right? But typically, people are a little more afraid of cheese the further you go down the ranks. And this is kind of the result where there's just never going to be an expansion. Uh, at this point, the expansion is so late that I'm even going to scout the map. But... I'm pretty sure he's just being really scared, but maybe I'm wrong. So I'm going to scout the map just to be sure, right? Uh, expansion is coming up here. This map seems kind of comfortable for Proxy Reaper because it's a little bit smaller. I feel like my barracks is arriving home a little faster than it normally would. Okay, there's something... He's building it in my freaking main base. That's funny. Wait, why is there a battery here? There's, there's, there's no units that can arrive. I mean, <laughs> kind of cool, I guess. Uh, sucks for him that I'm going to fight it, though. I, I, I do like the idea, I have to say. If, if I wasn't in, you know, the, the state of mind where I would scout, I think this totally could have worked out right now. He is warping in Stalkers, uh, but the battery's down, and I already have two Cyclones. Both of the Stalkers are going to die before they even get a shot. Maybe I can dodge the one shot. No! Oh, almost got it. Okay, there we go. So this proxy is going to be shut completely down. And yeah, I mean, it's not going to be completely over, but it's pretty much over. Th this is what a pro gamer would call over. If you guys have ever watched like um, a cast of pro gamers, not, not, not like professional casters, but actual pro gamers, you'll see like the smallest thing ever happen. And then I'll be like, yeah, that's it. GG. And, and as a viewer, you're just like... And they just come back from that. But like stuff like this, I mean, it's, it's, it has to be GG. If I lose from here, I, I would actively be really embarrassed because this is just a situation that you should never, ever lose. Like not in, not in a thousand tries, I should be able to lose this game. Okay, a thousand is maybe a bit much. Not, not in not in not in 15 games. I, I'll say that because I, I was going to say a hundred, but that also feels like a ridiculous amount. If I play this game 15 times and I lose once, I would be... I would be upset with myself. So I guess you can classify that as over. Now I'm going to go for the Cyclone drop. I, I am playing a little greedy, I have to say, with the, uh, you know, the bunker building there with no units nearby. I mean, I have one Cyclone, but he already had four Stalkers. Like, this is definitely a little greedy by me. Let's see. So there's four. Oh, he went for a full-on four gate too. Not even just... He's going to recall for that. Is that a... Oh, no. For a second, I thought that was a freaking uh, fifth gateway coming up. I did scout the entire map, right? So there's no hidden expansions going on. No, okay. It looks like he just wants to... Uh, wait, I had another raven. Oh, oops. I I don't even remember, actually. I was going to say I didn't mean to rally that across, but maybe I did mean to rally that across and I just forgot. Also very possible. I'm glad it's alive anyway. Uh, I didn't do anything to save it, but you're welcome, buddy. 
So he, he recalled two sentries and one stalker. Did I see that correctly? And then he moved them across again. I mean, I'm just going to come back. I have the auto turret as well to do a lot of DPS. I mean, he's going to lose every single unit there. He's going to try to break me one more time. Most likely with... Um, a war prism, if I had to guess. I think most likely with a war prism. And see, the other are doing so much damage, by the way. The battery is now run out. So even the warpin isn't going to save him. He's going to lose the rest of the pros as well. Because cyclones now are absolute probe devouring demons. GG. There you go. And that is going to be the first series of the day, guys. 2 0 against Intra. I mean, I already said it at the start. This is going to be mostly a warm up. And now we are going to have to play against Special. That's going to be a super, super difficult match. Oh my god. Wait, guys. Yo, I wasn't planning to do any analysis, but I auto automatically clicked on the units loss button. We played a perfect game. We lost zero units. Wait, what did I lose? I, I guess I canceled um, something? Or is it just repair? Or like, I, I don't even know what I lost. I mean, it says zero units, guys. This is a perfect game. Come on. Zero resources didn't reach him, but we did play a zero. We did play a perfect game. Zero units lost in a half a million dollar tournament. If I say it that way, it makes it sound like I beat the world champion in the perfect game. But it was a fantastic warm up. Let's go up against special. All right, map number one against special. This is where it begins, guys. This could be the end or the beginning of something great. Who knows? Now I did just choke on my water a little bit in the break. I was I was hoping to get some rest and kind of you know relax my voice and stuff for the match, but then I choked on my water like a silly goose. But it's okay. Here we are now. A little bit of backstory, I guess. Um, let's see. Special has about half a million dollar in earnings. He was dominating the Latin American scene more than anyone else. I think he probably won like freaking. I, you could tell me a crazy number and I'd believe it. Maybe like twenty five regionals or something. Like he won a lot over there. Like he really did. And nowadays, I, I think, you know, not trying to be mean, I think he will say the same. He has had a little bit of a dip in form. He's still one of those guys that could beat anyone uh, on a given day. But he's not quite, you know, the best non-Korean Terran in the world anymore like he used to be. He Back in the day, he pretty much took the crown for me, actually. Like, I was the best non-Korean Terran for probably about a year uh, or so, 2016 for the most part. A little bit of 2017. Uh, and then I think after that... I mean, it's not like I ever played against him, to be fair. So it kind of sounds weird to say he took the crown for me. But after that, he was the best non-Korean Terran. Until, I guess... I'm, I'm not quite sure if it was like Hair Marine or Clem. I, I think Clem... Because Hair Marine got good a little bit before Clem did. But I don't think he was good enough to take over Special at the time. So I guess Special probably gave it to Clem. And now, I guess, uh, what is that? Like three years later or so... Uh, Clem is still the best non-Korean Terran in the world and even has, you know, a chance to be called the best Terran in the world, period. I know a lot of you guys are Maru fans, and I respect that, of course. But uh, these days, Maru has been, you know, having a little bit of a dip in form as well. So now I would say that Clem is pretty certainly the best Terran in the world. Uh, I wouldn't call him, like, the, um, the best Terran of 2023, for example, right? Because, you know, Maru and, and Cure in particular are really freaking good. Uh, but for now, I think Clem definitely is. But anyway, that's enough backstory. Let me focus on this game. Now, what I can tell you guys about Special's playstyle for me, what is useful to know, <clears throat> is that he is a bit of a trickster, uh, but not, not really in the way that I'm a trickster. I like to kind of do uh weird builds and make them work or in particular i like to do weird openings and then play a, uh, a macro game from them special really his entire style is just something that he makes himself so very often he would do stuff like play mass cyclone liberator for example i think th there's a good chance that we will see mass cyclone liberator uh stuff like that so oh i got a hit off oh I, I okay well the more you know I didn't even realize there was a jump spot there. Well, it's good that I see that now instead of uh, seeing that later when it's too late, right? Okay, that's cool. Uh, I do have to say, guys, I could have done a better job at um, checking out the maps, like which map I was going to veto per matchup because I vetoed two maps that I know I didn't like that much and then I had a third veto and I didn't really know what to veto. So I literally just looked at the maps and one of, the, one of them gave me bad vibes. So I vetoed that one. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really stupid, I know, but I'm actually not kidding. That is pretty much what happened. Okay, now let me start paying a little more attention here because I did lose one SCV already, and 
I find that unpleasant, to say the least. Let's see if we can, maybe can hunt the Reapers to get a little bit of a win back here. Like, we're losing one SCV. It's not the biggest deal ever, but it is quite annoying. Uh, and yeah, maybe it's also that I'm just not... It, it doesn't feel like there's a Reaper jump up cliff there, you know? But yet there is. Let's see, I'm going to split my units. I, I know Special really likes to be active with his units, so I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see more moves like that later on. I do really, I mean, I have to scout first, but I do really expect him to go for like a Cyclone style. It just, it fits him so well to play something like that. Like it's just a weird, you know, like a weird Cyclone style with like a Liberator or just something like that, you know. So I'm going to go across with these. Um, I'm going to have to be very careful. I feel like in the past when I played against Special, I would usually perform a little better in the macro games than him, but I would always get behind in the early game. So I feel like these first like seven minutes or so are going to be super crucial. That was a Widow Mine. Oh, there's two Cyclos. Okay, I, I saw it in time so I could run away. If I didn't get hit by the Widow Mine there, I would go in. But now, um, I just decided to go back. And in the end, I know it sounds rough because I got hit by a Widow Mine. I mean, that's actually an efficient trade. A Widow Mine is more expensive than a Hellion, right? So, uh, I actually don't really mind that at all. Now, what? I, I think, like, a tank would be super nice. But just because it's him, and I think he's going to try some kind of harassment, I'm going to make a second Cyclone here. Like, I don't want to play the player too much, but it does, you know, make sense to do it a little bit, at least here. Like, he likes his early harassment probably as much as I do, so I'm going to position my Marines already. And, and I guess being aggressive on the map is also going to help me scout what his follow-up is going to be exactly, so it's definitely going to help with that. Let's see. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's Cyclones in here, so I'm going to pull a couple Hellions back. Um... Or one of my Hellions back, so only one would be locked onto. Let's see if I can go up here. There's a bunch of Reapers in my bed. Yeah, this is the kind of move I was expecting. Oh, this is going to be quite nice for me. He is going to lose all of those pretty easily. I don't think he really killed that much, so that is great. Going to send my Cyclone back over there. Oh, he has a... Wait, this could be a Cyclone drop, right? Uh, I've... It's just, I'm looking at what he has. Like, he has the two Cyclones and they weren't at home, though they could easily be just be protecting uh, whatever his base is, right? The last time I played against him, I remember, by the way, he beat us by doing two base all-ins with, like, a lot of tanks and air control. And sadly, I... I don't think I really would have the answer against that if I played against it again. Like, that is just something that, uh, you know, brought me a little bit of trouble in the past. And I'm still gonna try and be active here. Oh, this is very nice. Gonna be able to kill one cycle. Oh, it was perfectly in the grass there. That sucks. I could have killed it a little faster. Now, he's pushing me. Um, I'm actually gonna start making more ravens. I'm gonna keep the cyclones in position. Uh, because I do expect some kind of harassment still. Like a medevac or whatever it could be, right? Like, doesn't have to be anything in particular. His army is still at the watchtower. Um, I think I'm just gonna try and transition. Let's see. Oh, there's a bunch of ravens here. Yeah, okay. This is the kind of move I was expecting. What is he gonna try to do? Just cancel those. Okay, that seems all right to me, I have to say. He could decide to go for a little more. No, he's not going to do it. He could decide to attack at the front as well. Let me keep the Cyclone over here. He hasn't... I was going to say he hasn't pushed up, but then just that moment he did push up a little bit. He's going to move back. I made an extra Raven, by the way. So he did spend a decent amount of energy on the other turrets. And I did make an extra Raven, so I should have a decent amount more army than him. Yeah, I see some just sitting back. He does see the four ravens now. That might signal him. Oh, wait, is he... Could he be going for, like, the two base Alin style again? Maybe. Let's see. I'm just going to move forward because I know that will make him siege and then move back again. Let's see. I hope... Like, I can't let him siege too early. I do have enough ravens to make, like, a decent uh, hold against, like, mass tanks. But I also don't really want to push it, right? Let's see. He's probably moving up a little closer. He's not here yet. Okay, let's see if he's on the left side. Gonna scan over here. No, he's still there. He's gonna siege once more. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely gonna go for it at some point. Like, I have to get the break here. Yeah, it definitely looks like we're playing against uh, that two-base all-in style that I was talking about before. Uh, and I think if I get, like, really good interference matrixes, then we can make it happen. He's gonna move back now. I would like to scan his base, actually. I feel like scanning his base would be quite nice. See, he is... No, he's still here. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess he definitely does want to make something happen. Um, I'm. It's making me a little nervous to just have him in front of my base all the time. I kind of want to uh, go for it because I. it will help me get a little bit of clarity in this game, right? Like right now, I don't exactly know like how many bases he has and stuff. He does spend a lot of freaking scans, which does make me think he has a third orbital. Else he wouldn't be able to scan that much, right? 
Okay. Oh, he's going to go for this move. Okay, I'm actually uh, pretty okay with that because my units are going to be able to ro respond in time, which is nice. Uh, and now I think right after this, I'm going to be able to jump on top of his army. At least that is the plan. Going to use one grenade over here. Uh, still a pretty good move by him, I want to say. Let's see. Is he going to move forward now? He's going to try. Uh, oh, I, I, think he, I think we can just crush him, right? This doesn't look that great to me, to be honest. Let's see. Okay. And I'll drop a bunch of auto turrets. Uh, if I could kill the Vikings, that would be awesome. Let's see. I can't quite kill all of the Vikings. We are going to kill all of the tanks really fast, though. Can I keep one Raven alive? Barely not. Now, we did lose a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to have to go across the map. We are going to kill those as well. Maybe I'll start a couple of Liberators instead uh, of my 2-2 here. Need to be careful. Oh, he's actually going to go for it. Okay, that's a little crazy. Oh, that's a really big hit. Very, very nice. Now, he does have Stim already. So do I. But I don't have the Marine count to really uh, make that count. I did miss hotkey my camera location there which is a little annoying oh we're gonna be able to get that and a medevac as well very nice we're gonna lose two vikings for it no just one in the end quite happy with that let's see i'm gonna try siege a little nope okay that's one more tank than i thought it was gonna be never mind i'll just back off real quick gonna make a fourth cc yeah this is the kind of stuff i'm talking about like he played it very tricky i think he kind of made me think on purpose that it was going to be that two base attack that made me you know defend a little bit too hard and slip on my macro so that is uh, not really what i want to see of course the upgrades are he does have one one already yeah oh we're gonna this is the same situation as that one practice game where we're gonna find ourselves behind again because of the upgrades and that is very unfortunate drop is gonna hit in the main which is uh, gonna hit yeah I, I can't really defend this properly i have to say it's gonna take me a decent amount of time at least is he, is he gonna fly away already he could fly away uh decides not to it seems like wait i don't have i thought i upgraded combat shield actually oh no that sucks for me guys well at least we're gonna clean up the army that is nice i thought i already made combat shields and it looks like we are gonna find ourselves massively behind in this game guys looked good for us for a second but we are gonna find ourselves in a tough spot once again now my supply is still pretty high so at least that's pretty nice let's see if i can save these cyclones those are probably going to add a decent amount of value over time for me. Let's see. Okay. I mean, they're still alive for now. I thought they were going to die, to be honest. So that's quite nice. I'm going to send these Liberators across uh, just because they're my only hope of doing damage. My opponent is most likely on a fourth base already. And he has 2-2 well underway. Let me continue making these barracks and then I'll start making turrets again. Okay. I do still have units over here, so that is uh, going to be all right for me. Well, the one one is still not finished and the tank is too far back. Ugh. Yeah, this sucks for me, guys. This really does suck. Oh, he's gonna... Oh, no! How did that not get one more hit? Come on. I don't even know what it is that died, by the way. It's probably a turret, if I had to guess. Okay, so he does have a sensor tower over there already. Uh, I, just, I just need to get the turrets up in the main. That's, like, everything I need, really. Looks like I am gonna lose that command center over there. Maybe I can siege his mineral line as he's pushing me. Here we go. This is gonna be a really good timing. He's gonna lose a couple of tanks to that siege as well. There we go. Three tanks going down. That's very nice. The Liberator is gonna fall... What the hell are you doing there? I have no idea how that even got there, to be honest. Okay, well, that is uh, highly interesting, you could say. Yo, I can't believe how much value these cycles have given me, by the way. Like, uh, I, I feel like I should uh, apologize for all those videos that I've made while talking crap on the Cyclone. Because these, you know... Wait, I even canceled a command center with that. No way. Dude, if I wasn't so far freaking down in upgrades, I would feel so much better about this. Like, I really would. It is mostly the upgrades here. Okay, he's probably... Yeah, he has a couple of Marines down there. I'm going to have to siege these on the top over here. Just so I can get a really good volley over there. That's going to be nice. I think the Marines are going to come in a little too late, though. And that's going to be it for game number one. All right. Mm, I, I didn't want to put too much time into the analysis, to be fair. Um, but I think this game, I kind of have to. Because I need to know uh, where exactly the big mistake was, right? Wait, is that... Why was that Raven all the way in the bottom right? Where did, what the hell? Okay, yeah, I guess I guess I sent it back when I was getting attacked or something. Okay, that's, I don't even remember. Yeah, I did send it. Oh my goodness, that is a big mistake, right? I forgot after that. Okay, I see. So I'm down by... Okay, here, here the game is actually already over. Hmm. I, I think here you can pretty clearly see that... Okay, this is really good knowledge. This is exactly what I needed to see. Here... The game is actually over, right? Uh, you guys might not see it if you look at the supplies. You're like, what the hell are you talking about? L look at this for a second, right? Um, two command centers, 36 SCVs against 43 SCVs and a completed command center. 
it, it is an absolutely massive difference here. He even has one more Raven. Uh, and I think this just goes to show that my builds are just a little too outdated. I, I really like this build I'm doing, but probably more because it's comfortable than anything else. Like my opponent here, uh, it seems like he just played very greedy compared to me, which is what I have to do as well. And I mostly saw that judging from uh, the Marine count. Uh, I, I bet we'll be able to see it here as well. Let's see. So at this point, I already have four Marines. I almost have six and he has zero. He's just starting a couple. So he, he actually didn't make a single Marine before the third command center. And I do have to learn from players like this that are already in the meta, especially if I'm, you know, I have to make a comeback later in the series. I need to adapt right now. This is not something, you know, oh, okay, I'll write it down and I'll practice it with my tea next morning. No, I need to learn from it right now. So I just have to play a little grittier to match this. I do think I could go for my other build and then I don't necessarily need to adapt because it's already economical. That's probably quite smart because if i'm really gonna adapt this build right now um it's it's probably just gonna be a mess but yeah okay this is very comforting to see because i kind of thought okay well maybe my my macro just just sucks or or whatever right but here th this game is completely over like no one will will try to be in this position we can probably jump forward a little bit uh to when he started attacking me to look at the situation here uh his upgrades were oh no they, they were actually there yeah so it, it, well, I mean, you can still pretty clearly see it. I think maybe I caught up a little, but if you check it here, I'm down 10 SCVs. I'm down a full set of engineering base, and I'm down about 40 seconds on the barracks. So it is significant enough to call this game over. It would be winnable if I got the perfect defense against everything. So maybe if I sharpen the timing of the turret so he can't drop the main, stuff like that, uh, it would all be pretty fine. Like here, this was a good trade. You can see that I'm still clearly in a losing spot here, but I have the tank on, which is great. At this point, like, here's the thing. I, I know I'm going on for a long time, by the way. Some of you probably already feel like skipping through. That's fine. But I really want to get my thought process through here, right? Here, I'm down a full set of upgrades. I'm down by a bunch of SEVs. I'm down by a couple barracks. But I didn't realize that at the time. Here, this situation is winnable. Uh, my opponent is also floating a little bit of money. Maybe his macro is not as sharp as it could be. That That's a good sign for us as well. I mean, mine is not that great either. But if I played a passive game from here without trying to make stuff happen, I think it's actually a winnable game. But here I was like, okay, well, now we're ahead and let's attack. I was completely wrong. But that's it for the analysis. Finally, I know, finally. Let's get to game number two. All right, game number two is going to be on Hecate. Now, I do have... I, I think my build idea is great, but... You'll notice from playing a lot of tournaments is that sometimes it doesn't matter that your build is great. Maybe you know you know what's actually the, the worst feeling in StarCraft. Um, I haven't I haven't really experienced this in a while. Maybe it's I guess it's because I don't really compete anymore. But uh, the worst feeling in StarCraft is if your opponent does a, like I, sorry guys, but a real shit build, but it just happens to counter yours. It actually happens. Like it's, you know, you're going to be so disappointed to lose to a build that looks so awful. And I guess a lot of people probably have experienced this playing against me, right? Especially like my Zurg and Protoss cheeses. Oh, I need to make a gas. A little bit late on that as well. I was getting a little bit into that uh, that story over there. But, you know, people definitely have experiences against my Zerg or Protoss where they're like, man, this build is so freaking bad. How do I lose to this? It's kind of like losing to a planetary rush, you know? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be about, uh, yeah, it's probably just two chips of gas, eight gas down from not playing gas first but that is still very manageable uh, so don't worry about it i guess in the end it's gonna give me like you know just the slightest bit more mineral so i guess in that way it is positive now if we're gonna run into the worst possible scenario that we can have here is excuse me is a two racks reaper from home i think a proxy racks reaper well it's going to be hard to defend, but it's very possible, right? Like, I need to make a bunker here. We can already check. Probably a bunker over here that kind of covers both of these. Well, this actually kind of looks rough here for to defend the Proxy Reaper. But it would be defendable. But a 2-Rex Reaper from home, it's a build that is not really that all-in. But it still has enough punch to kill me. So then I'm going to have to adapt my build, which is not something I want to do. Let's see. Okay, so there's one Barracks at home, at least. That is nice to know. Opponent is going to be going for a double gas here. And there's a factory at home. Okay, that is very pleasant to see. So now I don't really have to worry about anything in particular. And the reason why I like this build so much is, first of all, I feel like double gas builds are the standard, but Reaper Expanse just get you like a little bit ahead. And you should be able to defend anything that they throw at you. And then why I like this version with the command center high ground so much is because it just adds like a little bit of a mind game, right? Like it's possible that he checks my natural and he's like, 
Oh no, I'm being all lint. Now, you know, a player as good as Special is probably going to go for the follow-up scout, just as I would try to do. Um, and see that I do, in fact, have a command center building. I, I feel like this, ev even if he walks up the ramp, like, just seeing this is also a pretty good hint. Like, someone making a reactor uh, with a factory next to it is a pretty good hint. He didn't see the command center, so I guess that's one thing. But he did see the factory so close to that reactor, so... I, I have to imagine that he has a pretty good idea here. Now, one, one thing that sucks for me is that this build, this new build, I didn't get to work it out as much as I would have liked. Uh, and it's mostly the part where I go for the extra cyclones. Now, I do want to pay a little bit of extra attention to the minimap around this point, because last game, this is where he came in with the two Reapers, uh, and he managed to snag one of my SEVs. Exactly, there we go. I, I just need to make sure this Reaper survives. I'm going to bait as many shots as possible uh, and try to get it to survive. Oh, this is going to be great. Yes, okay, he's going to lose both these Reapers. That is very nice. I bought enough time, um, and that is going to be just good enough for me. You can probably repair this SEV so it doesn't die as well. There we go. All right. Now, oh, I do need to get the Starper to build again. Yeah, I, I would say this is uh, most likely an even start. So now the advantage of the Reaper Expand is gone. Uh, and that means that we are now going to be able to play a even macro game. At least most likely that's what it's going to be. I still need to be afraid for the follow-up. Like, uh, the last game I said it, you know, he likes his aggression. He didn't do any particular harassment. Well, he, he, I guess he did with the Ravens, but besides that, he didn't do any crazy harassment, but I know he's still very capable of doing stuff like that. So I'm going to be being a little extra careful. That is too side. Okay. Is that a reactor cyclone? No, right? Hmm. Okay, this is slightly problematic because if he's going to go for multiple cyclones, I have seen people do this against me in the ladder as well. Uh, then I need to make extra cyclones myself, but that is not something I want to do. I think I'm going to make a bunk. I think that is going to be the play. I'm going to split my um, Cyclones in the bases and just make a bunker for these. And my Hellions are going to be able to, uh, yeah, I guess just see if the Cyclones are going to come across. A, a drop could be a little painful, but it would still be all right, most likely. I'm going to go up this ramp just to check if he's still at home. Uh, he might be a... Oh, no, okay, he's still there. Okay, he's making a tank now. But we're going to be able to kill the Banshee, I think. I just need to make sure I get the repairs. There we go. Ah, okay, I'm happy with that. That was a good response. That could have been really tough. If I lost the Cyclone, I would have lost a couple SCVs, and that would lose me the map control. But the repair was in time. Yeah, you do have to be so freaking careful nowadays with Cyclones, because they have less HP. They die to Banshee super fast. Uh, but that was an awesome start of the game. And now, I guess I will take a page out of his book. Uh, and just stop making marines and build my next command center. I think that's going to be a pretty decent plan. I uh, guess I'll, I'll just build it here because he went for the scan. I imagine he really wants to see the timing of that third or maybe he wants to see if I'm playing double star for it, etc. Right? Like it could be wanting to see a lot of things. Um, I'm going to put these marines over here actually. I got my raven going to harass the top. I did move out a cyclone that is now no longer going to be necessary. Oh, no, I missed the turret. Ugh, well, at least he scanned. He didn't have to. So that is... I, I guess we have to look at the positives, right? There's no reason to dwell. I, I failed to drop the turret. The Raven would have died anyway, so it wouldn't have been a good trade. But then uh, he scanned, even though he didn't have to. So that loses about 200 minerals for him, right? In terms of mule costs or whatever. And I'm going to keep these around. Do I want to play bio or mech? Oh, you come back. I don't want to send you out. That, that would have been one of those moments where suddenly there's a Raven dying on the map. I'm like, what are you doing here? Just like with the tank last game. Well, that tank was actually very useful somehow, so maybe I shouldn't compare them. Now, I wouldn't be surprised... Okay, the Cyclones are still there. I wouldn't be surprised if he's still going to try to go for, um, like, a, you know, the two starport attack, for example. Okay, that is one engineering bay only. That is interesting, actually. Just one engineering bay. I'm going to lose one tank. Okay, let's see. He has the third down already. Going to be able to kill a couple of SUVs with this. Yo, this was some pretty good harassment here, I have to say. I'm going to lose a couple of units, but really nothing too bad. Uh, let's kill this one as well. There we go. Okay, it looks like we're now... Oh, he scanned and he didn't kill it. That is beautiful. All right. So it looks like now we are actually uh, going up. Oh, he's just chilling outside of my base. That is interesting. Didn't expect to see him there, I have to admit. Uh, do I have enough tanks to break that? I'm not 100% sure, actually, I have to say. Let's see. Yeah, it's just two tanks, but it is the kind of stuff I mean. Like, these really annoying, like, weird, aggressive things, right? Where he's just standing in front of my base. It's pretty much what he did last game as well. Uh, and it is quite frustrating. Not going to be able to get a nice shot on that. I think I did lose something, right? Yeah, I lost my Cyclone. Oh, that's, that's a little painful. Let's see. If I can bait him just a little bit forward... Oh, that's going to be one. Hey, one Raven going down. That's nice. Oh, my Cyclone is alive. I guess 
I guess I pulled it back a little early or something. I don't know. Uh, let's see. It looks like we're going up against mech for sure, by the way. Um, I guess I, I, I can be a little patient. I just need to be careful to not overstep against the Cyclones. Like, it's easy to be confident here and just go in because the Cyclones are a little weaker. But I do think it's very realistic that, uh, you know, with his Raven usage, he is going to be able to make it happen. Gonna move this one. I almost have two interference matrixes, by the way. Uh, that would be quite nice. Let's see. Maybe I can shoot those Marines. Let's see. Oh, barely not. Oh, that would have been so nice if I could. Gonna move them just a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. So there are gonna be a couple of Ravens in the main. Probably just run away the SUVs. Um, let's see. I want to get these a little closer. Oh, no. I used one. I guess. Oh, let me just drop these. Oh, he's gonna lose the tank still. Okay, that's very comfortable. Nice. Let's see. Let's go back to mining with these and then finally land my base. Now, the thing is, guys, I am not in an all-in position yet, but I think I want to be, uh, is what I should say. I think I want to be in an all-in position because he's playing Cyclones, and Cyclones kind of suck against tank pushes, right? They're, they're also not the worst, but they do definitely kind of suck, so uh, that is one thing to keep in mind. Looks like he's coming back, actually. Okay, I don't have enough gas anymore to uh, make my stuff. Let's see, I know the Cyclones are on my side of the map. I'm actually going to lift these momentarily. I don't know how many uh, defensive stuff he has. Here we go. He's going to go counterattack with the Cyclones. That's what I expected. Yeah, my, my uh, what's it called? My tank is going to come out too late because I'm out of gas. Let's see, I'm going to micro this a little bit better. There we go. He, I, I can imagine that he does probably have a couple tanks out here. Oh, he's going to lose the, the Vikings right away, which is super nice for us. Okay, let's see. That tank is going to live for now. I'm going to drop these over here. Is there a tank in the bottom? I think there is. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there is still a, uh, a tank uh, down there, like next to the third kind of thing, right? Okay, I'm going to siege these. I need to be very careful. Oh, this is annoying. I think these are trapped. Yeah, oh, these are a little bit trapped. Okay. This is a tough situation that I'm finding myself in. Let's see. Oh, he's going to lose a couple of Vikings here, I think. He's going to go for the SUV pool. I'm going to target these Cyclones as well as I can with these tanks. He's going to lose a lot. No. Wait, what was that tank target? Oh, no. I think I just got robbed by my tank target fire. I'm... I, I had, like, a shift click to kill, like, a bunch of them at once, but one of them died too fast. So my po or my tank switched to another Cyclone and didn't hit the full clump. I think that's what happened. I don't think I killed enough SCVs here, guys. I think this is looking uh, like the end of our run. Like, I simply do not have enough gas. He denied my gas. And, yeah, this is going to be it. Looks like our opponent was a little bit too strong for us today. Um, not going to be able to show. I, I guess it's, it's actually pretty much what I explained in the first, uh, first game where usually when I played against him that I would die in the early game and that's exactly what happened. I didn't get to play an even macro game and I guess that's mostly going to be uh, well, I guess this game in the early game, not even that much went wrong for me. I just didn't really have the builds to go up against him, to be honest. Like, I, I really am pretty confident that I could have taken a macro game for sure, but I just kept being dead by seven minutes. Uh, and to be fair, that was always my weakness in TVT, so it's not like this is like a super surprise to me. Like, it was definitely always my weakness. I think... Even against Hero Marine, for example, I was always beating him 3-0, 3-0 because he was like this really standard Terran. And at some point, he became kind of crazy. And that's when he started getting some dubs on the board against me. And then at some point, I played against Clem, who just started playing like an absolute psycho. If you guys haven't seen Clem play, he... I mean, he's very fast, and now he plays very proper, but he used to be playing like a proper psycho, but still really fast, and he would get the best of me. And here, it was the same thing. I couldn't get, you know, even in the game, uh, and that's what cost me. And I, I have to give praise to his builds mostly. I feel like his builds were just very, very efficient. Like, this game, I, I even told you guys, we're going to take a page out of his book and make my third faster. His third is already freaking finished. Like, his builds were just better than mine, and that is a very big part of StarCraft, so... Yeah, I, I, I do think it's a little bit of a shame to go out like this because, yeah, to be fair, I didn't really get to show my abilities. And I don't necessarily mean the fact that I lost, but in these games, I was just too dead to be able to show, like, my macro play or uh, even my micro. And yeah, I, I guess it really is just, hmm, okay. Well, I mean, I don't know if we're going to be playing any more tournaments, right? But... This is so interesting. He basically did the same thing as game one where he just relies on literally two Cyclones to keep himself safe forever and just plays really greedy behind that. So I guess maybe that is 
just kind of the way you do it or that's maybe just the way he does it like he doesn't even have a reactor like i had in both games he just makes two cyclones from this and then starts a third command center without any units i do have to say if i did something really aggressive i probably would have just killed him so i'm not 100 percent sure about copying this like if you are please be careful please make sure you're playing as a macro terran but that is going to be it for this tournament saga a little bit of a disappointing end but i did my best and yeah i guess that's gonna be it i uh, don't think i have anything else to say i do want to say that i'm very grateful for everyone who stuck out with me uh, for so long six practice sessions and a tournament session was awesome sadly not the end we hoped for not quite the you know golden esl cast where we beat Bion and cure and dark with like the craziest games ever not going to be able to reproduce that magic today but that's going to be it thank you all so much for watching we'll be back to doing stupid memes on the ladder next time instead of in tournaments well this wasn't really a meme but i guess my builds are always kind of memes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.